In this lecture, we will understand an important hypothesis under which we study the mechanics of fluids. And the hypothesis is called the continuum hypothesis. If we study the molecular structure of a fluid or any matter, then we come to know that the distribution of the matter is not continuous. It is instead discrete. And the reason for this discrete distribution of matter is there are spaces between the molecules. If we want to study a fluid property, for example, if we want to study the temperature of the fluid in a certain region, then a way to do this is to study the temperature of the molecules in that region. Similarly, if we want to derive the equations for the conservation laws, then we have to apply the conservation principles to those molecules. And if we want to derive the equations that govern the fluid motion, then we have to apply the laws of dynamics to those molecules. And this technique of derivation of equations is called the statistical method. The statistical method for the derivation of equations is used in the statistical mechanics and the kinetic theory of gases. But in the fluid mechanics, we cannot use the statistical method. For example, a cubic centimeter of air contains about 2.7 multiplied with 10 raised to the power 21 molecules. And in the case of liquids, the number of molecules per cubic centimeter are even much larger than this. So, if we want to study a fluid property within this volume of air using this statistical method, then we have to study the property for that large number of molecules, which is certainly impossible for us. Therefore, in the fluid mechanics, we are interested in the average of the property in the vicinity of a point. And this vicinity, even microscopically small, contains a very large number of molecules. For example, in the case of air, a cubic micrometer of air contains about 2.7 multiplied with 10 raised to the power 17 molecules. So, it means that this vicinity or neighborhood is completely filled with molecules. Okay, what does it mean? It means that the distribution of the matter within this vicinity is not discrete. It is instead continuous. We call this vicinity or neighborhood the fluid particle. It is also called the fluid element. or it is called the continuum particle. Okay, so in the fluid mechanics, we can think of a fluid as composed of the fluid particles. Therefore, the fluid is not a discrete distribution of matter, it is a continuous distribution. So, we can assume that the matter is continuously distributed throughout the region of our study and this hypothesis is called the continuum hypothesis. Okay? So, if we want to derive the equation that governs the fluid motion, then we have to apply the laws of dynamics to the fluid particles. Okay, let me now understand some of the conditions under which the continuum hypothesis is valid. The necessary condition for the continuum hypothesis to be valid is the mean free path of the molecules must be less than the length scale the main free path of a molecule is defined as 
an average distance the molecule travels between its collisions with the other molecules for example consider a molecule suppose that it travels the distance l1 before its first collision with another molecule it travels the distance l2 before its second collision with another molecule continuing in this way suppose that it travels the distance ln before its nth collision the average of these distances is l1 plus l2 plus up to so on to plus ln divided with the number of collisions and this quantity is called the mean free path for this molecule and we will denote it by small l the length scale is the size of the flow system a flow system is a body around which the fluid flows for example a flow system can be a cylinder in this case the length scale is the diameter of the cylinder and we will denote it by capital l so the necessary condition for the continuum hypothesis to be valid is small l must be less than capital l or the ratio of small l to capital l must be less than unity if this inequality is satisfied then we can use the continuum hypothesis in most of the cases the mean free path is much smaller than the size of a macroscopic flow system so that this inequality easily satisfies for example the molecules of standard atmospheric air have the mean free path 5 multiplied with 10 raised to the power minus 8 meter which is definitely much smaller than the size of a macroscopic system so for light gases for example air and for liquids we can use the continuum hypothesis to study the fluid motion but for special cases for example in the upper altitudes of atmosphere the air have main free path of order 1 that is the main free path of molecules of air in the upper altitudes is 1 meter or greater than 1 meter so in this case we can not use the continuum method therefore we will have to employ the statistical method but most of the phenomena of the fluids are macroscopic therefore we can easily use the continuum hypothesis so i hope that you have now understood the difference between the statistical method and the continuum method so that's all from our today's lecture thanks for watching